be back here on the stage with a group of women who know a thing or two about pivoting and entrepreneurship. To be a successful nonprofit journalism organization, as many of you know, you need to be flexible, determined, and innovative. I'm thrilled that we could partner with Microsoft to put together this panel about the entrepreneurial spirit of two nonprofit news organizations. And my thanks to Microsoft for their support for this session, for INN, and their sponsorship of the conference overall. Joining me on the virtual stage, and I think we're all gathered here, are Kat Rollins, the entrepreneur who took a for-profit Bay City News service, preserved it, and launched a new nonprofit organization, Bay City News Foundation, that is doing the sort of journalism that was increasingly going undone in the San Francisco area. I'm also joined by Sierra Hinton, the executive director of Scalawag, a news organization that is an unabashed supporter of Southern people and Southern communities, and isn't afraid to tell others when they're buying into outdated or outright inaccurate conceptions of the modern South. We'll also be joined by veteran journalist Vera Chan, who now has a chance to see the pivots, evolutions, and uh, transformations of many different news organizations from her position at Microsoft. Before we dive into this conversation, though, I just want to make one brief note about a way you can participate in this session and actually win a Microsoft Surface uh, for yourself or your news organization. In just a second, I'm going to show off a video Kat made about her news organization that she created using only Microsoft PowerPoint. If you want to do the same about your organization and share it with INN by the end of the month, you'll be entered into a drawing to win a Surface tablet sponsored by Microsoft. You can find details on all of this, including the rules, in the chat, I'm gonna demo this video and then we're gonna dive right in. So bear with me for one second. Oh, I don't think the sound is going through because it's going through a headset or something like that, maybe. But I will vouch that it's amazing. That's a good point. Okay, hang on. Let me uh, give me a second here and I can probably fix that. Uh... You just have to click the share sound button or box at the bottom of the share screen window when you go to share. You yeah. Can go to share. Yeah. Thank you. All right, let's do this this way. And then let's do this this way. Share sound. Oh, come on. Uh, And while you're sharing that, I'm just gonna drop a link of a, a story that we did on uh, Bay City News. So if you wanna take a look uh, at Kat and her, uh, at Kat and her cat, actually, <laughs> the photo as well, uh, who made a grand appearance. And while Jonathan is messing with the video, this is Sue Cross. I'll jump in and um, thank Vera. Microsoft has been a great partner. Last year, they presented at INN Days and uh, working with us to highlight Kat's work and exploring distribution routes and all kinds of things. So we have really appreciated their support of the whole field. Um, those of you who took in our government panel know they've also been active in Australia and elsewhere and thinking about maybe changing the relationships between platforms and the news. So thank you for that. The Bay City News Wire Service is the backbone of the regional news ecosystem in the San Francisco Bay Area. It provides 24 seven news to other media, plus some government agencies and PR firms who pay for subscriptions. When the company changed hands in 2018, being purchased by a former intern, it was stable, but there were serious challenges. The most worrying was technology debt. Think pagers, satellite dishes, dot matrix printers, and outdated software. 
Dismantling and replacing old systems without breaking anything was tricky. We created a hybrid model by putting a nonprofit alongside the company. That allowed us to diversify revenue, do more journalism, and enhance our public service mission. We now have the flexibility to do all kinds of journalism and really focus on public service work for the region. Modernizing our technology was also key, and a partnership with Microsoft gave Bay City News new tools, training, and tech for doing our work. We created information hubs, mm -hmm. data visualizations, and graphics around equity, and collaborative projects to bring photos, maps, and videos to our work. We see more partnerships, growth, and enterprise reporting in our future. Because as the backbone of the news ecosystem in the region, Bay City News is now strong and sustainable. All right. Thank you, everyone. And apologies for the technical hurdles at the beginning. Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be a virtual conference without some sort of hiccups and challenges. Um, so with that, I want to dive into this conversation. Uh, if you know, I have just been totally thrilled with the chat that we've had all day. Um, so if you have any questions that you want to contribute, feel free to put them in the chat, and uh, we'll be watching. But now I want to dig in. Uh, you know, with that video, we heard a little bit about Cat's transformation, but let's just start with you, Cat. Tell me a little bit about the biggest challenges you faced uh, in your ongoing transformation. Well, I'll, I'll tackle that in two parts. The first was, I would say there were personal hurdles where coming from a news background, working as a reporter and an editor, I didn't have experience on the business side. So there were a lot of things I had to learn while doing them. And um, so that was a little bit of a challenge, but there were a ton of people, including the network through INN that was um, willing to help and teach and train. So also it had to do with um, being able to ask for help from people who were already doing things and not trying to reinvent the wheel. And then organizationally, as you saw in that video, I'd say the technology debt was significant and really is what kept me up late at night because if that went down, then our whole enterprise would, would fail. And so being able to transition from the old stuff to the new stuff to train staff, to adopt new technologies was really hard, but um, being able to get an assist from Microsoft on technology and tools and training really helped a lot to get us on the right path. And now I feel like we're in a position where we can build on some strengths that we have to try a whole bunch of new things and experiment with partnerships. We just recently added a brand new photo department from scratch, for example, that we never had before. We've trained our staff on how to do data visualizations to go with their work. Um, and we're open to doing other kinds of things like video and audio and um, other ways of storytelling in the future. Thanks, Kat. Um, Sierra, let me turn to you. One of the things I love about Scalawag is the way it really centers community and you know your, spe your specific community in everything that it does. And I wonder how has that guided and shaped the path you all have taken as Scalawag has pivoted and been entrepreneurial and evolved and changed with time? Yeah, um, thanks for that question. Um, so I think the biggest thing um, for us is like, you know, centering community to what end. There's a really big push in journalism right now to become more community focused, but it's not just about like the act of, of centering community. It's like, what are we doing that for? Um, and so we have spent just a lot of time focusing in on our theory of change, our unique value proposition um, to answer that question, right? Um, and so for us, we are centering and focusing on a community and, you know, shaping our entire uh, 
business model to reflect that uh, because we really wanna be pushing folks toward um, and helping move folks toward um, a more equitable and just South. Um, and because of you know how we think about the South and the role that it plays in our country, uh, a, a more equitable and just nation and, and eventually world. Um, and so like we center community to the end of making sure that folks have um, the knowledge are able to build the consciousness that they need um, to, to be moving toward that just and liberated world. Can you give an example of any sort of specific, I mean, and I, and I know this infuses all of your decision-making, so this may be a hard and perhaps even impossible question to answer, but yeah. can you give an example of any particular decision that you were like, well, we could do A or B or X or Y, but this is the right decision for that reason? Yeah, um, I think the most, the biggest, most glaring one is our decision to end our print publication. So Scalawag started as a quarterly print magazine. Um, and about a year ago, we moved to being digital first. Um, and the biggest thing there was like our audience um, for our, our print magazine was uh, predominantly white and skewed older. Um, and obviously now, um, you know, Scalawag is black led. Um, the majority of our team are people of color uh, and uh, we're based in the South, which is where most black people, um, but it's also just the most diverse region in the country, um, you know, really wanting to uh, move to products that uh, would better reach the, the audiences that we wanted to reach, but also, um, yeah, would help us to uh, shift our audience um, a, uh, not away from, but to include more folks than we had been including previously with our print magazine. That's a great example. Um, Vera, I wanna turn to you briefly and, and then we'll come back around to some more questions. And I already saw one question from the chat, but Vera, you, know, you have this really interesting position at Microsoft where you get to work across the industry. You, know, you and I talk from time to time. I know you're talking with journalists um, in nonprofit news, outside of nonprofit news. Tell me, what are you seeing? Who's innovating? Who's uh, able to be entrepreneurial? And, and what are you just really impressed by these days? Well, I will say that a lot of the interaction I have is actually through industry membership groups. So I think that one of the things that I see, and I'm probably biased towards that because I'm biased towards working with people like you, is collaboration, right? And that's not necessarily innovation per se, because I will say, having been alive forever, um, a lot of things that do uh, that are innovations seem to me iterations of things that have come to pass, but just like a really great new way, more efficient way to do it. But I think that going to, going to where audiences live through the various, you know, social media technologies and, you know, to Sierra's point, right, going digital, which frankly, when I worked at a newspaper, I know sometimes we're not supposed to say that, but it was actually just a newspaper back then. Um, but that, you know, what should have been a digital first, it should have been uh, really going to what the audience's behaviors were. Um, another thing that I am a, a little bit biased towards is explainer journalism. Actually, I know your next last section touched upon like need more of those stories that really answer kind of like that simple, you know, how and why in the context. I worked in search trends for, you know, years at Yahoo and the types of stories that you would see, it, you could almost predict human behavior as to what they want to know for certain types of stories, breaking news, sports stories engagement celebrity stories, there was a little pattern of behavior that people want to know the answers to. And I think that's really great to see, you know, uh, organizations like Vox and whatnot going to that direction. And, and, and I will say that dailies had done that for a very long time, just sort of more of a sidebar way. Data visualization as another extension of transparency and trusting audiences to really interact and, and dig in. And so, um, and, and I think one of the big things too, one last thing is uh, out of many, it's just kind of the innovations that are also turning inward towards the newsroom culture itself, right? Towards the discussions about diversity, towards the discussions about technology, towards the discussion of remote work and enabling people who traditionally may not be able to sustain a career in media, they can do so now because of these accommodations, which have been a long time coming and continue to be worked on. Yeah, I, I love that shout out for service journalism uh, because I think we do see some great examples of journalism really in service communities. You know, Scalawag does it, Outlier Media, um, who I think is on the on the agenda for, for tomorrow, if I'm remembering the, the agenda correctly, does that really, really well. Um, uh, Kat, let me, let me turn to you. You know, you talked about sort of where you went and sort of, uh, you know, the challenges along the way, but where are you guys going? 
what's the next pivot or what's the next change or what's the next innovation or how are you continuing to push forward change within your organization? Uh, well, one thing that we did was we started a public facing free site, which we call localnewsmatters.org. And originally it was a place to experiment and showcase the work that we were doing that was supported by charitable contributions. And it's been a, a, an amazing kind of an experimental testing ground. So it's where we can try new things. And if they fail, we just delete them. If they succeed, we can grow them. And uh, the nonprofit side is really where a lot of our growth has been. So for example, we um, developed an information hub for the coronavirus pandemic, and we are keeping that updated every week and daily sometimes, depending on what the news is. But once we built the infrastructure, we could replicate it and we used it as an election hub so voters could figure out where to register, how to vote, who was on the ballot. And then we picked up that infrastructure and did it again for libraries because during the pandemic, that was really a community network and a community service that was used a lot. And those institutions also had to pivot to do everything online. And we're doing again now for the fire season. So that kind of um, replication of something that worked is th something we'll do more of going forward. And then we can push all of that content over onto the Newswire where it has tremendous distribution. So since we have a hundred clients who subscribe to the wire, they can get all of that sort of bonus content that's really oriented around public service and it can get amplified into the region. So then all of a sudden our story that might only get a thousand views on our local site gets up to 8 million views through TV, radio and print on the other side. So that kind of hybrid sharing of information is something we can build off of and just keep experimenting with. That's great. Sierra, how about you? What, what uh, two years from now, uh, if we can dare to, to dream of a, a world two years from now, what's, what's Scalawag going to look like and how are you going to continue to innovate and pivot and change? Yeah, um, I love what Kat just said, that really like iterative approach and finding that like small unit that you can just build on over time. Um, I do a lot of like personal leadership development work and um, Jim Collins book, Good to Great, he talks about the flywheel effect mm -hmm. um, and like what is that sort of smallest unit for your organization that you just work on over and over and over again so you build momentum, right? Um, and so that is really what we've been focused on at Scalawag um, during the first part of this year uh, when we ended our print publication, uh, it freed up a lot of time for us. Um, and we were able to do a lot of stuff and we grew tremendously. Um, but what we figured out is like the growth wasn't sustainable. And so now we're trying to get to what does actual like sustainability look like for us. Um, and so we have actually made the decision to publish less. So uh, currently we publish three to five times a week. Now we're moving to one time a week um, and we're gonna use that additional capacity to really think about, okay, we have this one story. What are the many ways that we can tell this story, whether it's through audio, whether it's breaking it down into like cool Instagram reels or whatever, so that we can reach even more people, um, but also that we have the capacity to tell um, these stories more deeply and more um, and engage with our audience more as we do it. Um, so that's really what we are moving toward um, is like, what does like, you know, um, awareness plus editorial plus engagement plus revenue look like? What is that small iteration for us? Yep. And how do we build momentum around it? I love that. Um, I've, uh, I've been accumulating some questions from the chat, but feel free to put some more in there. But before we, we switch to some of those, um, another question for you, Vera, which is sort of, you know, I think one of the things we think about tech organizations like Microsoft is they often sort of sit at um, the, the pivot point for how ch society will change. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are lots of Microsoft secrets you can't share, but tell us a little bit about, you know, where 
where do you see Microsoft's um, support for journalism and interaction with journalism going, um, you know, in the next couple of years as well? Yeah, uh, well, I'm glad to say that we will continue to pay publishers as we've been doing since uh, the past, you know, past some time. So that's that's good. Um, and, and I think I might have spoken this in the past that, you know, Brad Smith has been such a great advocate for journalism. It's been, and he's a president of Microsoft. Um, in his top 20 initiatives of 2020, journalism is in the top, right? So that's always been, and that has led to something like what they have, I think they've been still calling informally the Safeguarding Journalism Pilot Program, which I think, and INN has been helping out as well, which has been a very interesting uh, uh, program in which they are looking at, you know, kind of the rural tech communities, tech sparks communities we're already in, trying to help the infrastructure there. But then seeing not only how can we help the newsroom through, through scale, through skills and scale, but also to connect them with their own eco ecosystem there, right? Um, with connecting with the local philanthropy and, and strengthening those uh, contacts. So I think that is a very savvy way to do it. You could always try to throw money at a program, but you know, making these kinds of relationships and enabling these conversations are also valuable. And then, um, you know, and, and that's part of scaling is, is part of Microsoft's overall uh, uh, efforts, right? Because in during the pandemic, um, a lot of things were for LinkedIn courses were free, a lot of um, online uh, a sk a skills training was free. And I think we ha were able to help like 30 million people. And so it's it's a big job. Um, and then one of the other things is a partnership that the, you know, we've teamed up with the BBC and industry-wide, this is great uh, related to our Defending Democracy um, uh, team, which looks at deep fakes and hacks and everything like that. So it, it is an industry-wide industry cooperation to set standards so that you can do like watermarking at a, at a very, at the creation level. You know, you take a photograph, you know, it's a legitimate photograph. It's, it, you know, you, and then mix it up to the paper, you know, or online. I keep saying paper. <laughs> I think I was cursed by Brent. We know saying, where you are, Vera. Like, know Brent's like, don't use the word newspaper. And of course, now that's all I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to, to, you know, to reinforce that authenticity, because there's so many areas in which we need to look at in media. It's, uh, it's kind of big. It's kind of big. Um, so yeah, those are just some of the areas that we've been looking at as well. Totally. Uh, I'm going to go to the chat just a bit because Sean Ogden very helpfully teed up a question that I had wanted to ask as well. And uh, Sierra, this question is for you, but Kat, I'm going to come over to you as well with this question, which is, what was the, Sierra, what was the metric you used to decide on stopping uh, growth work uh, and concentrating on co content? I think, you know, it's talking specifically about going from three to five times publishing a week to one time a week. So how did you decide um, and how did you measure that that was the right decision? What's the, yeah. what's the measurement? I would say that like, this is the growth work, right? And sometimes like growth is not linear. Um, and sometimes like you take a step back to take a step forward. Um, and so for us, like it really was uh, the capacity of our team. And like, could we do this? Could we go at the pace that we were going at? Like indefinitely. Um, and if not, like, what does that pace actually look like? Um, so that it is iterative. Um, we really try to be agile in our work. Um, and so, the, you know, and like agile in the like tech sense. Um, and so that's a really big part of it. Like what is that design do loop, that small iterative thing. Um, and so it wasn't like a set metric. It was really like, can we sustain this truly? That's great. Kat, what, what metrics are you tracking now? What metrics did you track at the beginning of your transformation and, and has that changed? Uh, well, I would look at it with two different lenses. One is on the business side. We actually look at how many customers we have and how many new customers we can find and what they pay us because that revenue stream is what supports that whole operation to do 24 seven news, which is not inexpensive because you have full-time staffing. And as we build in new technology, it means that we also have new products. So that's a matter of getting feedback from those customers about whether they want it first and then whether they're willing to pay for it second. But on the other side, on the nonprofit side, I would say we're, we're like a lot of people here today where we're looking at readership levels, we're looking at what people are willing to fund, whether it's an individual who's saying, I really want to see more environmental coverage and I'm giving you 
$10 a month or $1,000 a month. I mean, it's really um, looking at what resonates with the readership. And we're also starting to do more tracking around um, how we distribute our resources around the region. So we can actually literally see on a map where our clusters of stories are and where we're not covering stories. And that helps inform us too, in terms of where the gaps are and how we can be useful. That's great. Um, we have about five minutes left, but I'm, I'm gonna throw a question out to all three of you. And then um, I, if we have time, I'm gonna come back uh, to the question from Bruce in the chat, Vera. So if you wanna look at that and get ready, um, go for it. But my, my question for all of you is just, um, what would you tell anyone else who's thinking about the entrepreneurial changes and transformations they need to make in their organizations? What's one thing you either wish you knew when you started down this path or what's one lesson that you come back to over and over again? And um, I'm just gonna go around uh, the screen on my end and start with Sierra and then we'll go to Kat and then we'll go to Mira. Yeah, um, I think, man, there's so many. I'll go with, uh, don't be afraid to kill things. I think, um, you know, we get so attached to products. We get so attached to products and it's so hard to innovate um, when you are just thinking about keeping alive the thing that you've always done. Um, and, you know, I think, so for me, it's just been so freeing for us to just be able to be like, you know, this product is a pop-up. This product will last as long as the need exists. Uh, you know, we don't know how long this product will last, but we're going to launch it and see what happens. Um, and just to be open to those possibilities um, and to just be open to emergent strategy, um, I think is the biggest thing. Um, and like setting that outcome, but like also being open to, to what could happen. That's great. Kat. Um, well, I'll, I'll repeat what I've been hearing a little bit today from others, which is that it's really important to delegate. And, and that means actually empowering other people to take the lead and just do stuff. And even if people on your team don't know how to do something, they can learn. And there's so many people who want to help. There's actually a lot of volunteers out there too, who bring certain levels of expertise. So definitely being willing to tap into that and make room in your schedule to have those conversations. That's great. Vera, any, any insights from you on this topic? Just have a really rigorous understanding of who your audience base is, right? For the, for the short term, medium term, and the long term. Because if the product that you build has a cultural identity that doesn't match the audience that you're trying to mm -hmm. pull in, then you have to really reevaluate whether this is the right entrepreneurial direction that you want to go. I think that's great. Um, Vera, so I, I teased this question. I think we've got about a minute left. Um, is there a way that Microsoft could, could take a version of Bing News Search and, and prioritize local news or geographic radius or anything that you might wanna say about sort of how MSN does that or anything that that, that question brings to mind? I'll give a, the short overall uh, ar arching answer is that we always do try to uh, pull in as much local news as possible. There's always business, technological, legal challenges, not only ingesting local news, but also feeding it out. I mean, the good things that protect people's privacy are also the things are like, so where are you and what news do we deliver to you? So that's always kind of the challenge. And so uh, I, it, it works and it sometimes doesn't work um, because of all those factors, but we're always trying to improve and exchange. And there's interesting things that are coming out more in the local news product front. So stay tuned. And I'll, I'll just say that from an INN perspective, we've had good conversations with the, the MSN News team just about helping more INN members see their content featured there and work happening in the background. And as Vera said, hopefully more uh, good news to share there down the road. So again, stay tuned. Um, oh, Johnson, if I may, I just yeah. want to put on one more revenue concept is sometimes what you do is not what makes the money. Um, you know, if you think of like Yahoo Sports, they got great writers there, but what brings in people a lot of times in fantasy football. So just want to encourage, this is actually my indirect way of encouraging Sierra. Like if you have a Scalawag line of clothing, I will get it. I already have, you know, cats, great design of t-shirts. Just saying, this was not payola. My office is in my closet. This is not payola, but I just <laughs> want to uh, throw that in. That's I love that. I, I love all the merch. 
<laughs> and swag we have seen rock today. I mean, from public sport source t-shirts to scalawag hats and this from you now. Um, we're out of time. I will just point out that Sierra has been helpfully providing some examples of uh, things that she and the Scalawag team have done. Um, thank you, Sierra, Kat, Vera. Thank you, team Microsoft. This has been a great conversation. Thank you to everyone who's being here.